2024 is the year of the dragon. And this means everything for one particular country, China. The year began with Chinese President Xi Jinping's threats. He said that the reunification with Taiwan was inevitable. It's President Xi's promise to his people. And he's definitely preparing to deliver it. Xi has improved China's military unlike ever before. He already commands the world's largest navy, and he will now get another shot in the arm, as China will soon have the world's largest air force. The People's Liberation Army Air Force, or PLAF, is known as the Chinese Air Force, and it is responsible for the Communist Party's aerial operations. Today, it is the second largest air force in the world, and China is on track to dethrone the US. Currently, the US has almost 4,000 aircraft. In comparison, the Chinese Communist Party has 3,150 aircraft. Here's a breakdown of China's primary manned attack aircraft. Beijing has over 150 H-6 long-range bombers, which are capable of delivering a nuclear payload. The backbone of the Chinese Air Force is the J-10, which are over 500 in number. China also operates around 50 Russian Su-27 and Su-35 jets. PLAF also has 200 first copies of these Russian jets, which it calls the J-11. And then there's China's very own stealth fighter called the J-20. Beijing has over 200 of these. China's strength is its indigenization, because all these aircraft are made at home, even if it's using stolen and reverse-engineered technology. So how is China on the path to having the largest air force? It's because of the Communist Party's massive military-industrial complex. Here's how many fighter jets China can manufacture in a year. The fastest production is of the J-20 stealth fighter with 100 airframes a year. This is followed by 100 airframes of Chinese copies of the Russian Sukhoi jets. And every year China makes 40 airframes of its workhorse, the J-10. So how did China achieve parity with the mighty US? It's because of a state-owned firm called Aviation Corporation of China, or AVIC. AVIC is the sole aerospace conglomerate in China, and it has two major manufacturers underneath it. These are the Chengdu Aerospace Corporation and the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation. But the question remains. Beijing can produce the numbers, but can it match the quality of the West? China is a force that projects strength. But they have not fired a single bullet since 1979 after being handed a beatdown by Vietnam. The American military raises doubts about the effectiveness of Chinese weapons and aircraft. So for now, without operational proof, China's air power looks great only in theory. China's Communist Party is going to field the largest military on land, sea and in the air. But she is aware that his troops are not combat ready and he wants to change that. China has poked several countries to gain some real-time experience. This includes India, Vietnam, the Philippines, Japan and the island of Taiwan. China says it has territorial disputes with all of them. And she uses his military to assert random historical mythologies. But the Asian nations are taking the Chinese threat seriously. China continues to increase its defense spending at a high level and is rapidly expanding its military capabilities across a wide range of areas without sufficient transparency. China's military trends are a matter of serious concern to Japan and the international community. I believe we should respond by leveraging our comprehensive national strength and cooperation with our allies and like-minded countries. Allies in Asia are standing together against China. 
In addition to the dispute between the Philippines and China, I think everyone also knows that China has already constructed quite enormous South China Sea military bases on the three islands surrounding Taiping, such as Subi Reef, Fairy Cross Reef and Mischief Reef, which are all quite close to our Taiping Island. We have to include this situation in our general considerations. Leading the front against China's aggression is the US. The American war machine is ever present in Asia, lurking, giving Beijing the cold stare. And this year, America has taken its friendship to another level. Multiple exercises have been held near the Taiwan Strait and the West Philippine Sea, and many more are scheduled in the coming months. We're standing up for peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits. I revitalized our partnership and alliance in the Pacific, India, Australia, Japan, South Korea, Pacific Islands. I've made sure that the most advanced American technology can't be used in China, not allowing to trade them there. Frankly, for all this tough talk on China, it never occurred to my predecessor to do any of that. I want competition with China, not conflict. And we're in a stronger position to win the conflict of the 21st century against China than anyone else for that matter, than any time as well. China may have the biggest military in the world, but Xi Jinping has no allies or friends. He can turn to Russia, where Putin is occupied with Ukraine and NATO. And then there's a trigger-happy Kim Jong-un, who's obsessed with the US. But without any real combat experience, China's biggest navy and air force are far from being dragons. They are paper tigers at best. <laughs>